Good evening, this is Robert Scribbler. It is July 10th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another one of our climate and clean energy video blogs. Now for this segment, I'm gonna talk about a new scientific study that recently came out and describing the various knock-on effects of a Heinrich event, which is rapid ice glacial ice melt land ice melt particularly as it relates to the north atlantic and greenland and how that can result in the chain of events that cause a carbon feedback to be produced from the southern ocean but before i get into that i want to talk to you a little bit about wind particularly wind surrounding antarctica now this picture is a, is a polar picture looking down at Antarctica, and it's a measure of wind speed for today around the furthest southern continent. And as we can see, there are strong winds surrounding Antarctica in the 40 to 50 degree latitude zone. I've highlighted a zone here just south of Africa and the Indian Ocean. And over recent years, what has been found is that the circumpolar winds surrounding Antarctica in the Southern Ocean have been strengthening and they have been moving south. A recent article, well, a 2014 article in the Sydney Morning Herald highlights a, a, a study, a scientific study that shows that these winds are becoming stronger and they're shifting south and according to the study the roaring 40s which were the were, were the 40 degree latitude zone where these winds typically occurred are, are shifting south the strong winds are shifting south into the 50s which is coin which has spurred the coining of the phrase the furious furious 50s and this is as a result of a climate change trigger which is shifting weather patterns poleward. And in addition, this study found that the Southern Ocean winds are now stronger than they are, than they are at any time in the past 1,000 years. And here's a graphic showing these shifting zones and increasingly strong circumpolar winds. Now, now this is a, a climate change related signal and it, it has a number of knock-on effects. But before I'm, I talk about that, I also wanna talk about the recent cool water pool in the North Atlantic. And this, this pool plays a role in, in the shifting of these circumpolar winds. And, and what happens is that as Greenland ice melt increases, it produces what is known as a Heinrich event in which icebergs generate cool, fresh water in the North Atlantic. And this, this cool pool expands and it produces a number of atmospheric and ocean knock-on effects. Now, the recent study out in nature has found that through the study of paleoclimate and through, through a model study, that during the last deglaciation, the Earth saw an abrupt increase in atmospheric CO2 by about 40 parts per million, and that this, in, this increase occurred in two phases during a Heinrich event, which they call Heinrich Station 1, at, at about 16,000 years ago. And and this event was caused by the knock-on effects resulting from cooling in the North Atlantic. Now I'm gonna show you their, their figure, which shows the dynamic changes that occurred through, through a series of teleconnections between the ocean and the atmosphere. So I'm just gonna describe this simply. What, what first happened is that because Greenland melt increased, there was a flux of cold, fresh water into the North Atlantic, which caused the North Atlantic deep ocean water formation to weaken. And, and this flux also pushed 
the intertropical convergence zone southward, which pushed the southern hemisphere westerly southward and increased their strength. And in addition, what occurred as the North Atlantic deep water cessation cooled the North Atlantic, the South Atlantic warmed. And as we said before, the intertropical convergence zone shifted southward and this strengthened the southern hemisphere westerlies and moved them poleward. And as a result, upwelling of the circumpolar deep water surrounding Antarctica increased on decadal time scales, scales meaning over the course of tens of years. And as a result, this upwelling pulled carbon rich water up from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and placed it in contact with the atmosphere, leading to a, a centennial scale outgassing of, of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which resulted in this 40 part per million CO2 increase. And now these increases occurred over multi-decade to multi-century timescales. So, so the CO2 increase due to this change was probably on the order of uh, 0.2 or 0.3 parts per million per year, which is rather small compared to the present atmospheric carbon dioxide rate of increase due to human-based, fossil fuel-based carbon emissions. But it's still enough to add a bit of of feedback in response to human-based carbon emissions in the present time frame. And so that's one of the reasons why this, this study is relevant for today. And so I'm gonna go ahead and read the summary paragraph, the final summary paragraph here, to give you an idea of what can happen as a result of potential current Heinrich event, which, which it does seem that we are at the start of presently. And the study notes that it highlights the crucial role of Southern Hemisphere westerly winds in driving abrupt atmospheric CO2 rise and associated global climate change. Given the projected poleward intensification of Southern hemis Hemisphere westerlies over the 21st century, and the fact that the Southern Ocean has absorbed 10% of anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions, our results suggest a future reduction in CO2 sequestration in the Southern Ocean with significant impacts on future atmospheric CO2 and climate change. So, so in short, these increasing westerlies, which, which have already been observed to a certain degree, are predicted to increase further over the 21st century as Heinrich event type situation in the North Atlantic intensifies. And this in turn will reduce the ability of the Southern Ocean to absorb human-based carbon emissions and also result in more Southern Hemisphere Ocean ventilation into the atmosphere. Now, to be clear, this is a concern in, in that it, it creates less time for, for response and heightens the urgency of transitioning to renewable energy. But this carbon-based impact is nowhere near as high as present fossil fuel burning in the present context. Well, thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.